first lesson, John chapter 12, verse 48. He that rejected me and receiveth not my word, hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Brethren, all the words that came out from God are what is judging the world. Have you not known that by saying that you will never refrain from fornication, that you have conclusively judged yourself? A liar is in an incessant war with the truth. Any person who steals fights against the truth so also are those who bear malice against any other person. All those who drink are in abominable fight against the truth. If we had searched ourselves, God would not have judged us. But when he judges us, he chastises us that we might not be condemned along with the worldly people. Why, is, why it is not recommendable to drink is because wine defiles the body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit, God's own dwelling place. Drugs in any form defile the body. Let us ask ourselves where God will dwell when we take drugs. Anger is very bad in that you have only one heart. Once you are angry, which heart are you going to show the love of God? Once you refuse to adhere to the words of God, you will be sick at all times. If you do not abide by the words of God, you cannot acquire power or peace or happiness or joy, lie or life in your lifetime. Any human being who rejects the doctrine of Christ is likened to an animal. As soon as you receive the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, you develop into adulthood, endowed with power, faith, hope, and peace of mind. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I can of myself do nothing, but as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is true, because I do not do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. The doctrine of our Lord Jesus Christ is everlasting life, it is peace and joy, but we have refused to abide by his instructions. When it is said that man is saved by grace, it means that God has, forgiven, that God has forgiven all our sins. And this is likened to a person who is given a free air ticket from Nigeria to London. When the person arrives, he ought to learn the English language, which will help him to receive his lectures. Failure to study the English language means that you are in London for nothing as far as studies are concerned. So also with the case of a government offering you a scholarship to study. It will not study for you, nor can it take the examination on your behalf. It is exactly the same thing with the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, for his death has redeemed you from sin. It is now your bounden duty to learn of our Lord Jesus Christ that you may be delivered and redeemed. This is the essence of being saved by grace. God has never called anyone to himself when such one is righteous. God always called a person who is sinful, but he uses his words to wash and teach you. You on your own part 
have to reciprocate his good gesture by receiving and abiding by his teachings. The wisdom of God is so great. Do you know the meaning attached to his calling you to himself when you are yet in sin? He calls you during this stage that you too may be friendly with a sinner. Had he called you when you were righteous, you would be filled with much indignation and would not stoop down nor would you receive any correction from any person you feel is sinful. After he had reformed you to live a righteous life, you will be able to accommodate a sinner. It is not difficult for God to descend people from above to earth to execute his work, but the fact is that those from above would not be able to associate with the people from the earth. God is able to make men bear the fruit of the womb. But should the men folk bear children, what would be the woman's part in the family? It is equally possible for a woman to be pregnant without having carnal affairs with a man. But God does not permit this so that man will not be ignored by the women folk. For the glory of a man is in the woman. Have you realized the wisdom of God? He goes into a man but passes out into the world through a woman. Had it been that a man descends from above while the women while the women were from the earth plain, the man would not have lusted for the woman and vice versa, but God so made it that both come from the earth plain with their different assignments so that there would be a mutual respect between them. Have you realized how God extends his glory to teach us oneness? He teaches us not to steal, fornicate, and not to commit other vices. And because we abide by his instruction, we have life everlasting. As soon as you commit one sin or violate one of the commandments, it means that all other commandments are violated. You may feel confident that you do not steal, but you tell lies. And I ask, to whom do you tell the lies? Is it not to a fellow man? If you do not offend a brother by stealing his property, but you have cursed him and put him to shame and thereby making make him unfriendly with you. Note that all the laws of God are recorded in one law. You have offended in all the laws. We can only be at peace with one another when we abide by the laws of God because as soon as one is violated, the peaceful relationship with man is destroyed. This is so because the law of God is also of man. When it is said that you should not commit adultery, that is the law of God. But, were, but where is God's wife that you are forbidden not to commit adultery with? This law is for man. Do you ever feel free with a man? Who commits adultery with your own wife? Do you not say that there is nothing that will make you to reconcile with such a man? It is the violation of the law. Adultery coupled with fornication have set the entire world into confusion. Adultery breaks marriages 
and rendered many families unhappy. But the very day your wife commits adultery with another man, she is no more for you. The law, do not drink, is a law made for man. You are witnesses that anybody who drinks cannot control his temper. He talks at random and the person always feels like fighting and quarreling. The law of God is the law of man and the law of man is the law of God because your house for instance is for God while God's house is yours. The teachings given to you by God are for your own good and we have to abide by them. You have patience but you have no mercy and as such you have not benefited from that alone. You may be so humble. You are yet yeah, you may be so humble, yet you are a thief. And you could be so quiet but heady and hard hearted. You can now understand why it is conclusive that when one law is offended, one has offended in all, because he who says, do not kill, also says, do not fornicate, so that if you kill, but you do not fornicate, you are guilty of all other laws. What we refer to as witchcraft, juju, mermaid, and charm, are the barks of trees, their stems, their roots and their leaves you may wish to initiate into a witchcraft society or any other cult in the southern part of Cross River State but I bet you will only be given roots the barks and the leaves of trees if you doubt ask any person who has initiated into any secret society if those performing the initiation do anything more than what I have disclosed to you, nothing is put inside water or in any other thing for the person who wishes to be initiated. Juju, witchcraft, mermaids and others are names of different spirits that you do not know about. Do you not know that the trees, the roots, and their barks are all living beings? These also have spirits and are human beings, though they are called angels. When you are given anything to drink, you take it in readily without knowing exactly what it is made of. of. That is why when it is said that a person is poisoned in food, it is true, but for God's mercies, there are some leaves which, if taken as food, can kill. The food becomes poisonous because you have adulterated the body of Christ. You have been taken out from sinful ways and you have known that which is perfect. You should not question why a certain thing occurs, but should rather believe that God is living in you. At times, you rub concoction all over your body, forgetting that God dwells in you. And in this case, where do you want God to dwell? You add limestone in your food, so that the food might be tender, you take limestone through snuffs. Do you know that you have killed yourself? He who snuffs suffers from diabetes. And if a woman snuffs, she suffers from a very poor flow of her menstruation. If we persist on doing all that God forbids us not to do, it brings us untold affliction. Besides, 
God lives inside you. When God wants to work in you, he finds out that you have snuffed yourself with drugs. He finds out that you have stuffed yourself with drugs. Do you not know that God will not hesitate in deserting you? Whenever God leaves you, it means that you are responsible for killing yourself. This is why God advises you to acquaint him with anything that goes wrong with you, for he is ready to work and relieve you of your worries within a short time. At times, whenever you feel weak, you take drugs and concoction. Can you support your action with a reference from the Bible? You are the cause of all the troubles that confront you. You bring death upon yourself by taking drugs and concoctions. Those people who are dying in the hospital, what do you think kills them? It is the different kinds of drugs administered unto them. When you are warned to desist from taking injections or tablets and other forms of drugs, you tremble and say that you are going to die if you do not receive these treatments. The scriptures say that he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who fails to believe would be condemned. Christ emphatically said, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. Read the second lesson again. Second lesson, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 25. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refuse him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Brethren, why do you joke with the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit warns you not to steal, but when you look around and do not see any person, you steal another person's property. The Holy Spirit warns you not to fornicate, nor tell lies, not to take drugs, but advises you to go and ministry work. You prove stubborn and give excuse that you have no money to go and ministry work. The Holy Spirit urges you to pray for a man. The Holy Spirit urges you to pray for a non-baptized member of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, but you refuse to go for the mere reason that you do not want to be disgraced. The Holy Spirit asks you to give money to somebody, but you reply that you do not know the person and therefore refuse to give. Brethren, you should all consider this voice that directs you in all your undertakings and other things beneficial to you. Have you ever seen him? If the person who remains on earth spoke to you and you are punished because of not hearkening to the voice, how much more if you give a deaf ear to the voice of him that you do not see with your eyes? If when he speaks to us, we refuse to abide by his instruction, do you think we shall escape punishment? Brethren, let all of us listen to the Holy Spirit because he speaks to every individual. Let us know that at any time that we do not abide by the advice of the Holy Spirit, that we shall receive untold suffering. 
if you receive punishment because of not abiding by the voice of a mere human being, do you not know that you will not be saved if you refuse to abide by the voice of God? His voice is not discriminatory. He speaks to a child and to an adult. He speaks to everyone irrespective of one's religion or tribe or tongue or nationality. He speaks to an individual. He speaks to the government and the societies. You have no excuse if you hear his voice and refuse to abide by it. He instructs you not to eat meat because from the foundation of the world God had never ordained that man should eat meat. This is no, there is no difference between man and an animal. The blood of a goat, for instance, is exactly like the blood of a human being. Brethren, human being deserves pity because for no reason should the blood of an animal enter into the mouth of a human being. God gave them power to rule over the different kinds of animals and he is regarded as God to all other creatures of God. The proof is in the fact that no matter how huge an animal may be, as soon as it sees a man, it becomes weak and may fall down. Brethren, know that you will be forgiven of whatever sin that you commit, except that when you kill a man, you will in turn be killed. That was, that was the more reason that our Lord Jesus Christ asked Peter to put back his sword into the sheath and added that he who takes the sword must be killed with the sword. You are always deceived into thinking that the whites are wise, but I ask, if this is so, why should they manufacture destructive weapons? He who knows God commits no murder, Many people allege that it is because of unemployment that they enroll as soldiers. I am assuring you that your eyes will open one day when you kill somebody even in the battlefield. For you will also be killed. Christ had known that whatever a person does to the other, the same will be done to him. Hence, he admonishes us to refrain from all manners of sins so that these sins may not stand against us. We yearn for everlasting life, yet we refuse to abide by the instruction of the Holy Spirit. How would we then have everlasting life and peace? Brethren, man is foolish. Note that if we refuse to abide by the directives of the Holy Spirit, there is nothing we can do to be saved. You may cling to, to the saying that you are saved by grace. Note that you were saved by grace so that you may refrain from sin and be able to serve God willingly. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Do you not know that you are slaves to whatever you yield your members to? If we continue indulging in sin, do you not know that you will die? Do not accuse anybody that he or she is responsible for killing charming or doing to you any evil because these calamities come your way because you have refused to abide by the instructions of God and refused 
to receive the words of life. As long as you refuse to abide by the words of the Holy Spirit, the words of God, you will not have good health, you will lack peace of mind, money will not be steady in your possession, and you will never achieve anything good. He said, I will pour my spirit unto you, and no person will teach you to know God, for all shall know me from the smallest to the greatest. If the Spirit tells you not to fornicate and you persist in the deed, you are a dead person. All the troubles, the tribulations that come your way come because you have refused the instructions of God. You put on your white suit on and come to the battle. At the same time, you are telling lies. You are fornicating and committing all atrocities. What is the need and what is the use of your wearing the white suit on? Now we are in the Pentecostal assembly and see how empty the great hall is. But at night, this hall will be packed full with brethren. Read the golden text again. Golden text. Acts chapter 3 verse 23. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Brethren, that is the voice of the prophet that speaks on earth. What about the voice of the one that speaks from above? That was the prophecy that when the time comes, all those who do not listen to the voice of that prophet will be cut off from among men. You may claim that your father is a Christian, but I am asking, if he has never consulted a native doctor or a medical doctor, he could be the person who brought Roman Catholic to your village. And the question is, was he not a drunkard? and a quarrelsome fellow? Is there any of the church denomination that abides by the instructions of that prophet? All they know is that God help those who help themselves, and for this reason they worship juju, mermaid, and indulge in charms. They drink, they snuff, and initiate into secret society. These are they who call themselves the real Christians. You have to tell them that all those who will not listen to the voice of the prophet will be cut off because I am standing in heaven to make this proclamation. The scripture right from Genesis to Revelation says that any person who does not practice the words of God as contained in the Bible shall be cut off from among men. Fight with your might by all means and in all ways to put into practice this gospel because it is not too late to mend. People have been saying, I have forsaken everything to follow God. But the question is, have you refrained from all vices? What have you yet forsaken to have alleged that you left everything to follow God? Has our Lord Jesus Christ not told you to love your enemies, to have love for them? Does he not tell you that when you are slapped on the right cheek, that you should turn the left? Have you done this? Has he not warned you that you should not be annoyed with any person? That you should not say to anybody, you fool. Does he not warn you that you should not look at a woman with lustful eyes? Has he not told you 
that any person who rejects his doctrine that his words will judge such a person on the last day? This is the more reason that I stand here every morning and evening pleading with you to practice the words of God because his words mean life everlasting and peace. This salvation and deliverance are all the good things you can think of. When you say that God should come and help you, do not forget that the word of God is the only salvation. When you say God have mercy on me, know that the word of God is that mercy. If you refuse the words of God, you will be cast away, for God is no respecter of persons. He honors his words. If you do what God tells you, you have everlasting life. But if you do not listen to and abide by the words of God, you have got no life. Money, food, and every other worldly thing cannot save you except you perform the words of that prophet. Then you will be saved. Brethren, it is said that a stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May God bless his holy words now and forevermore. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.